Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex technical analysis. If you are new, welcome. Um, and if you are returning, welcome back. Um, just wanted to say thank you as well to everybody who does continue to watch these videos every week and comments um, and subscribes and uh, finds you know great use out of my weekly analysis videos thank you so much for the support and i will continue to give you value um, as and when i can so um again just uh, before we get into the fundamentals and the technicals uh, if you're new there are links in the description box below regarding uh, the stuff that I'm doing here. So chart analysis on trading view, as well as uh, some other resources as well. And you can check out the YouTube channel. So getting into the week ahead from the fundamentals, because fundamentals and sentiment is what drives the market and that's how we determine value within the market. It's not price. It's not a price chart. Price charts are just uh, you know, a reflection of perceived value. So in the week ahead, we've got the Fed, uh, Federal Reserve and the Bank of England will be deciding on interest rates, um, but no changes are expected exactly. Um, I can't see the Federal Reserve um, or the Bank of England either um, uh, raising or, or, or cutting rates. They're definitely going to hold, I say definitely, but um, the probability is on the side to, for a hold. Other releases include US jobs report, um, ISM PMIs, personal income outlays, uh, not necessarily jobs report is gonna be uh, probably the most important out of that. Um, UK consumer morale and market PMIs, Eurozone first quarter GDP growth, that's gonna be a, a, a one to watch. Inflation as well, definitely in business survey, China, uh, NBS PMIs and manufacturing PMIs. Um, Again, very important. Why is that important? Uh, because China is the global economic engine. If China starts to slow down, then it has a knock-on effect on pretty much the rest of the world. So uh, China, even though you might not necessarily trade the Chinese yuan, the, uh, the Chinese economy is definitely one to keep your eye on. Um, as it definitely affects, um, for example, Australia as well. So it affects everybody, but mainly the um, the commodity currencies like the Australian dollar and the New Zealand dollar as well. So uh, you've got Australia AIG PMIs. Markets will also react to US-China trade talks, which is more sentiment based. And guys, if you do want to find out more about the um, fu well, fundamentals, if you're new to fundamentals, I have a fundamental analysis course, which is in the, again in the link in the de description box below. Fundamentals and sentiment analysis course, and I go over why fundamental analysis, what I look for, and what you should really look for, because it can be a bit of a minefield. The uh, fundamental analysis, but I give you the most important parts that I look at: um, sentiment, risk on, risk off, putting it all together, and some other and some other modules as well. Everything you pretty much need to know about fundamental analysis. And also, if you click on the uh, bottom documents uh, fundamental analysis spreadsheet will take you to this spreadsheet where I give you my fundamental analysis bias on um, current the currency right so dollar I've been bullish and for any of you that have been following me following me for a while um, you'll know that pretty much I've been bullish on the dollar for um, you know over a year and a half two years probably a bit longer than that um, and uh, so neutral bearish, so you know that really for the euro dollar currency pair, you should be selling the euro dollar at supply zones pretty much, and that's how you match your uh, uh, your currency pairs and there's some resources. And last update was today, just before I started making this video. Um, so now let's get into the technicals. Let's get into the technicals. So uh, we're gonna start off as we always do on the Dow Jones dollar index. And the Dow Jones dollar index um, uh, is a measure of dollar strength against the major currencies like the Euro, the Yen and the Pound and the Australian dollar. Now last week, we didn't have a, uh, an update video. Um, last week was Easter weekend. Uh, Good Friday and then Easter Monday and uh, took the time off so we got a bit of catching up to do and a bit of updating to do so uh, from last week this was the analysis um, we were in again a bit of uh, you know uh, between 
a, a low range and a high or low price and a high price so we were really within this range and uh, prices were either going to pull back right to the, this area here and look for longs or prices could continue you know a lot higher it sounds simple but um, I was expecting really prices to um, you know with the dollar to basically strengthen how it strengthens um, and how it gets there is uh, you know is anybody's guess but we can see what had happened and the dollar actually strengthened over the past two weeks now we're pulling back a little bit so now we need to really just update the the charts so let's update the charts in real time and what we're going to do is delete all right delete that we'd also deleted uh this supply zone this larger supply zone um earlier uh and this is probably going to break anyway simply because it had touched once twice three times so the more times the level is touched the weaker it becomes so now we're up into really this this higher zone <clears throat> and um if you are looking to short the dollar pretty much now is the opportunity and you wouldn't necessarily be shorting the dollar um the dow jones dollar index you'd be waiting you'd be looking to short on any of the other dollar crosses but as i have my fundamental bias right i'm going to be looking to long the dollar so what i'm looking for is any kind of bullish price action or i'm going to be waiting for a you know for price to really come down into some demand zone so the first demand zone that we have is going to be here let me draw this out right there and then we've got some demand here as well so um if prices start to sell off on the dollar and you're starting to see a bit of a pullback on the dollar yen dollar swiss etc then prices come down here and then we get some bullish price action that will coincide with those dollar pairs again if you are seeing some negative price action say negative but bearish and some selling off price action here and you want to get short on the dollar uh now is a um, pretty much a decent time but um last week uh, we had some decent readings out for example on gdp advanced gdp was way better than expected advanced gdp index quarter on quarter wasn't that great but overall the uh the gdp for the um the US economy was um, is growing so is it a is it a good choice to actually start shorting the dollar uh, for me personally not I'll be waiting for pullbacks you know into you know value pretty much before looking to get long so uh, that's pretty much dollar index for now uh, moving on to the dollar yen and the dollar yen um, we come up into this supply zone and now what have we got and what's happened the supplies pretty much held they get a bit of a push up then a bit of a pull back so this uh, level seems to be um, holding a bit so you know once twice three times looks like a bit of a stop hunt there and what I'm looking for is for prices really to come down to this level this level of demand right here we did have bit of a trend line um you know supporting that level but no demand so you wouldn't really necessarily be trading at the highs waiting for a bit of a pullback and that would coincide with some dollar pullback uh you know weakness potentially i wouldn't say necessarily weakness but you know um uh, more of a sell-off and profit taking on the dollar index and the dollar as a whole and then you'd be waiting for prices to really come down into this demand zone before looking for a buy so looking at the dollar yen this is pretty much what we want to see yeah there and then higher or if that level doesn't work out that's what i'll be looking at right now if you are looking at selling the japanese sorry or buying a japanese yen over the us dollar you'd really be waiting for something like some sort of risk off environment um the risk off being uh, a bit of uncertainty within the, the global markets or within the uh, US economy so let's say for example uh, we've got some sentiment with regards to the dollar Chinese uh, trade war 
or negotiations, we call it a trade war, if you know talks necessarily break down or anything like that, then you could see actually a sell-off on the Japanese, or sorry, on, on the uh, US dollar, right, which would coincide with a risk-off environment, negative sentiment by the Japanese yen, and then you can take advantage of some uh, potentially um, risk-off sentiment on the Japanese yen. So that's this would be pretty much your uh, your your sell trade right now if you were looking to get short. Um, moving on to the dollar Swiss. Dollar Swiss um, again. Uh, Swiss franc being uh, the weaker out of the two, and um, again I was probably looking for a bit of a deeper pullback to try and get into this, but we just didn't get it. Prices just kept going and kept going. Broke through this uh, these supply zones, and now we're up into a larger supply zone right here. And uh, um, it's funny because uh, a lot of people will follow the trend, right? And um, we follow value. And what I mean by that is, at one point, this was the last real candle um, or price action. Now, if you didn't understand fundamentals, what would you be doing? You'd be seeing that, you'd be looking at that down, and then you'd say, I'm waiting for some sort of pullback into you know some sort of supply zone which I think sorry was here right supply because you're looking at new low being made pullback and then traders be looking for a short right but if you're looking at the fundamental analysis spreadsheet you would understand that you really want to be a buyer of the dollar and the Swiss franc bearish it's nothing to do with um, trend trading. We're looking at value. What is a value? Yeah. So looking at dollar Swiss and back to really the charts, you can see exactly what happened. You know, um, basically it went higher. So now what we're looking at from a value perspective are. Oh, demand zones and again this is just not necessarily financial advice this is just what I'm doing and uh, how I trade yes did I get well I didn't get involved in this but what I'll be looking at is pullbacks prices eventually do pull back into a demand zone and as long as the fundamentals are you know um, still in play right and risk is is not off risk is still on this is the first area I'll be looking at and then this would be the second area if you are looking to short you might have to wait maybe a week or two but so be it you know we're taking high probability trades and high quality trades rather than um trying to you know short at every supply and demand zone overall this is where you'd be looking at uh if you are looking to get short and take advantage potentially of some dollar weakness which within uh, times of you know dollar strength there will be pullbacks there are going there is going to be some sort of pullback you got you know market that literally hasn't pulled back in you know probably three four weeks probably maybe a month or so at some point there's going to be some profit taking at this supply zone but does it mean that you should get short again that's a question for you uh, me personally I'd rather wait for you know a pullback and this is how you trend trade you know with um, supply and demand you have to just be patient but also with supply and demand if you understand value we're looking at buying at value and getting in at the beginning of trends that's our aim we're not looking to you know following trends is basically just uh, after the fact right so uh, we're not worried about missing out on trends we're looking at trying to get in at value areas that's first and foremost, uh, we're not um, being dictated to by price, we're being dictated to by fundamental value. And you can see the proof of that, yeah, in what you're seeing there. So potential shorting opportunity right now, if you are looking to buy the Swiss franc, again, I'd probably say risk off, risk on any pullbacks into demand zones. Next is the dollar CAD. And dollar CAD, um, again, we had a uh, bit of uh, dollar strength and some CAD weakness. Um, oil was strengthening as well, but when it came to uh, the dollar being number one, 
you know, we can see what's happening here. The Canadian dollar has strengthened a little bit this week as well, simply because um, their central bank has a neutral stance, uh, more of a neutral stance on uh, raising or cutting interest rates. They're in a basically a holding cycle. Wait and see. So um, neutral sentiment. Uh, I would still probably be a buyer of the uh, dollar over the Canadian dollar, US dollar. So we're waiting for potential pullbacks into that area before looking to get long. If you're looking to short, you'd have to wait for really prices to come all the way back up to here um, before looking at a short from a technical analysis perspective. This looks a, like a brilliant short, but um, you'd really have to wait for you know the dollar sentiment really to uh, uh, to kick into play. Um, negative, really, you know, surprising sentiment for me to really try and take any kind of short trades on that waiting for basically a pullback into uh demand zone um next is the new zealand dollar us dollar new zealand came down into this demand zone with a bit of uh, uh horizontal support at this area and then we did break lower and again at the time the uh, new zealand dollar was weak there was some negative sentiment um, with regards to the central bank saying that they were the next move potentially is a cut in interest rates and that's what caused obviously the uh, the dovish sentiment and uh, that's what we saw but now uh, recently we got a great um, and last week if we go to Forex factory the New Zealand dollar uh, where is it their trade balance um, basically smashed all estimates so previous was minus 68 million they expected a, uh, a surplus of 131 and they literally smashed it so uh, the New Zealand dollar at the moment um, decent is taking I guess uh, traders are going to be reevaluating whether the uh, RBNZ would need to actually uh, cut rates um, so what you're probably going to end up seeing is some New Zealand dollar strength not necessarily against um, the uh, the US dollar you've got two potential strong currencies against each other which would result in a ranging market but um, you know against some other New Zealand pairs uh, we, we are you know long on the New Zealand dollar at the moment and um, uh, we've we're in some decent profit uh, some traders in the actual group so um, uh, New Zealand for now I think is um, definitely a buy so let's go and update this chart and I want to say the New Zealand is a buy not necessarily against a stronger currency but a weaker currency so again fundamental analysis spreadsheet you would be probably looking at New Zealand dollar right against something like the Swiss franc Japanese yen euro and even against the Australian dollar so um let's uh let's lower this i don't really like to lower it but for um just for i guess chart purposes we can use this area here as a level of demand this would be your supply zone right here supply and then you've got little bit again of pretty supply right there hidden supply there so those are your levels if you are looking to get short you'd be looking at probably it's a wide zone let's see it's still still relevant really so you'd be looking at prices to come up into the supply zone and then looking at any kind of short trades if not you'd be looking at prices to come up up way up into here this 67 uh, 70 level before looking to get short if you are looking to get long probably waiting for a bit of a pullback before looking to get long but just bear in mind that you are um, probably trading um, strength the strongest currency the US dollar against another uh, fairly strong currency so the pound dollar is the next one and over the past couple of weeks we've got some uh, some dollar strength again uh, a bit of pound I wouldn't say necessarily weakness but you're again you're, you're trading <coughs> you're expecting the dollar to really again gather um, and gain in strength as it is the best economy so um, the this is pretty much what's happened coming down into this demand zone reacting a little bit down here 
let's go to the charts and update so this week what you'd be looking at is if we update these supply and demand zones you've got hidden supply there supply there a bit of supply there so you've got a cluster of supply really above these zones but you've also got some I would probably extend that around here so you've got horizontal now you've got a supply zone you've got resistance support 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 and then turning into potential resistance so we've got value here we've also got proven value and we've also got um, some uh, uh, where other traders would be looking to get in short as well so um, a cluster of potential supply orders coming in at this level um, providing again that the, uh, the dollar is uh, still strong the pound is fairly um, you know uh, strong with um, I guess Brexit being taken off the table or Brexit as we know it being taken off the table and extended um, and heading into the obviously the European elections Britain is now and the UK is now part of the European elections and will be voting um, all and uh, pretty much negative Brexit sentiment is being taken off the table um, so far um, so I think the British pound should strengthen maybe not necessarily against the US dollar um, much but um, against a lot of other currencies, the British pound would probably be the one to buy. Um, but if you're looking to get short right now, this would be this is where you'd be looking to get short. If you're looking to get long, then you know uh, probably right now would be a decent area. You've got a round number, the one two nine area, so maybe a bit of a pullback into this demand zone before looking to get long. Are there any other levels? probably see that area right there as a level to also look for long trades if this level breaks if you're looking to buy the British pound uh, going on to the euro dollar euro dollar so uh, we were waiting for this one um, saying in uh, the previous video that we were looking for short trades euro dollar buying the dollar at this level and we got short here and you can see pretty much what's happened um so uh yeah let's uh again i guess update the charts uh one sec that's what we're looking for so we got in short up here and uh again as a result this is how you get in on um you know and looking at fundamentals and it makes your trading you know so much easier when you have a directional bias so now if we're looking to take advantage of certain levels and this is this demand zone would be a level that had been um, created from way back in 2017 and what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this probably to this low here yeah move that and the next one is probably down here so if we are looking to take advantage of dollar strength we'd be looking for a pullback all the way up to here before looking at a level uh, to take the short trade why wouldn't I look for an obvious level which is probably going to be around there and for various reasons but one is that this doesn't represent value for me you know support support just because you've got resistance there um, you don't really want to be looking at short in here you want to look for always supply zones because this is the source of and this is the origin of the move down this is where the bargain is right for the dollar proven bargain um, prices went lower so then if you're looking for a sell trade you know where are you looking at taking a you know a well, I say a sell trade but buying the dollar do you want to be buying the dollar here if that's the bargain up here no I'm looking to buy the dollar all the way up here so waiting for pullbacks a lot of traders We'll probably be looking for you know this area here to look for a short trade and if it does work out uh, you know well done to them but I'm looking at high probability trades and supply zones and demand zones so um, I'll be staying out of that trade there I'll be looking at this area here for a sell trade and if prices do go lower then that will just create another supply zone and what I'll be waiting for is a pullback into that supply zone 
Um, again, buy trades right now. If you're buying a euro, um, now is pretty much you know, your opportunity. Nothing really more to be said than that. Euro yen from last week. Um, came up into this supply zone. Decent selling opportunity if risk was off. And you can see pretty much what's happened. Massive sell off. Um, come down into this lower demand zone. And we've created some supply zones. So I think the Euro Yen, I really want it to be a, a, a seller of the, the Euro with the upcoming European elections and risk possibly being off. You know, my, my uh, medium term play is to actually get short on this currency pair. So we'll be looking at any kind of opportunities to get short around here in that supply zone. And potentially, if prices come back into this supply zone, I'm not necessarily a fan of this one. I just touched, you know, several, you know, twice already. So I'd be looking for prices. If prices came up to here, I'd be looking for maybe the fresher area of supply before looking to get short and obviously risk being off if risk is on um i'm probably gonna stay out of this currency pair altogether uh but now what you've got is a level along with some demand here so you could see some uh euro rallying if not prices down here would be the area to look for buy trades if you're looking to buy the euro Moving on to the Australian dollar, US dollar. And again, a couple of weeks ago, we had prices come up into this supply zone. And then we had sell off with the Australian dollar, um, you know, the, the central bank being um, dovish. Also, uh, CPI missing expectations as well. So um, there is a potential uh, uh, for a rate cut the RBA um, said. So um, you're seeing again, sentiment take place within the market and updating the charts. Clear these demand zones now. And what we're gonna start to do <clears throat> is, let me take this and I'm gonna lower this, uh, this level here. You got support, support, support. You've got a wide demand zone here, which is really kind of created from, um, I guess, beginning of the year, how goes and stuff like that. Um, so I'm gonna keep this demand zone here, as ugly as the chart looks, but what we wanna see within this demand zone, if you're looking to be a buyer, right, then you'd be looking for to be a buyer for buy trades now. And at any of these levels within this overall large demand zone, if you're looking for a sell trade, these are the areas, well, this is the area right here, really. You'll be really waiting for a long pullback, right, into this area, or if prices start to make lower highs and lower lows like that, then you'll be waiting for prices to come up into whatever, you know, supply zone it makes. For example, we might be doing something like that, and then that create the supply zone and uh, get it short there. So, um, I know the chart looks a bit messy, but those of you who follow along will understand exactly what I'm talking about. And again, if you're confused about how to draw supply and demand zones, there are links in the description box below. A lot of free training um, uh, that I've put out online, and just go to the YouTube channel. Um, got webinars and a um, lot of training that you can. Uh, watch and take advantage and understand exactly what um, I'm talking about when it comes to supply and demand zones being created. And finally, we have the Aussie Yen. So um, again, risk being uh, slightly on and then now with the Australian dollar um, being a bit dovish on their interest rates, this is what you're pretty much seeing bit of a sell-off does that mean that the yen is strong um, I think I still rather be a buyer of the Australian dollar um, in a risk on environment but I think negative sentiment is just playing out which gives us an opportunity to buy the Australian dollar for cheaper because the Japanese yen really isn't the currency to buy in a risk on environment so going to the charts uh, we can get rid of some demand zones some of these levels here 
So now we're back really into, you know, these demand zones around here. Don't really like the technical setups here, to be fair. If I was looking to be a buyer, I'd look for probably a lower level, a fresher level down here at the 77 round number around there before looking for any type of long trades as these levels have been touched, you know, several times. Well, this level is a bit more fresh, but down here, the 77, seven level, you've had one, two, three touches. So um, I'm not a fan of uh, several touches of levels, but um, again, if you're looking to be a buyer, now is an opportunity. Um, but if you are looking at a, maybe a higher quality trade, you'll be waiting for prices. If prices get down to this level, 7750, 77 round number level. If you are looking to take advantage of some potential risk off into the market, you'll be looking at that higher level there. So really, again, pullbacks into that level from a technical analysis perspective. Uh, this is a brilliant, brilliant level. I do like this level. Um, and uh, for those of you who have got the course, you'll understand that this is what we would call a capture pain relief zone. This is what you would call like an A1 setup. It's just fundamentally whether you want to be a uh, buyer of the Japanese yen. Yeah. Um, so again, why do we look at the Australian dollar, Japanese yen? It's just a measure of risk off and risk on. And also look at the stock markets and bonds, government treasury bonds and also gold. Right, but um, again, risk on, we're buying this, risk off, we're looking to sell this currency pair. So um, that's it for this week. If you have found it useful, my analysis, please like, please subscribe and share. It really helps. And um, if, again, if you have any questions, please just uh, leave them in the comment section below or email me at info at trading180.com. Also as well, um, I know a few of you, quite a few of you have been emailing me asking me about um, re-enrollment. Um, uh, and enrollment will start at some point this week. So um, looking to, you know, uh, take on some uh, some new students as well. And uh, if you are interested, um, yeah, just go onto the Trading 180 website. But guys, thank you very much for watching and staying this long. And uh, I hope you have a great trading week.